What's up everyone, Jace Two Cents here. We're bringing it back old school with doing a vlog here at the house because my upstairs loft slash gaming room has been lacking something as long as I've lived in this house, which is over a year and a half, and that's decent audio. I've had decent video now with the LG OLED panel, which is a EG65 or 65 EG9600, but I've always just been using the onboard speakers, which until today is not gonna be a thing anymore because Dolby Atmos has actually sponsored today's video and they sent us over the LG SJ9, which is a 500 watt RMS 5.1.2 surround sound soundbar. I know, that sounds, like a, that sounds like a lot to ask of a soundbar, but I think we're gonna test it out today and see exactly how it really is, is working out. But before we talk about that sound bar, let's kind of take a look at what's changed over the last little bit. So this is Little Jay's setup right here. She's obsessed with setups. It's a little messy right now. She didn't know I was making this video and she's at school, but um, she's obsessed with setups. In fact, she's been watching Jonathan Morrison, TLD Today's uh, Dream Setup series. And it's costing me money, so Jonathan, stop it. But in all seriousness, that's the same system she built when she was five. It's over three years old now. It's gonna be going on four years old. It's time for an upgrade, but she's been being a little punk with an attitude lately, so I just have not felt like gracing her with a new computer. She keeps asking me, and until she earns it, she ain't getting it. But for now, this is her setup right here. Again, it's messy. This is the IKEA Freddy desk. We got that and put it together. It's like one of the most iconic desks, I think, amongst PC enthusiasts. It's inexpensive, and you can fit a lot on it. But with that said, we still have our nice, brown couch right here with a chaise lounge. I'm a tall guy, I'm six foot four. I don't know what that is in stones and whatever else, but I can stretch out on that, which is kind of nice. These are our sumo lounge bean bags right here. This is probably the highlight of the room because when you want to watch TVs you just or movies or whatever, you just flop down in the bean bag. It's memory foam, it forms to you. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really comfortable. So you guys have seen this before. This is my Abutto Revolution racing cockpit. We added our um, hydro brake recently for when we do drifts and rally and stuff in this in VR. But this also has my Fanatec wheel and pedal setup. It's also got the additional um, load cell brake addition on there. So the brakes really hard. It really represents like a real race car where you don't have power brakes. Nice uh, racing sim. I think part of what we'll do today too when we test this sound is we'll test the actual like demo stuff that was sent. But I think we should also pit Jay versus Nick on who could do the fastest Nuremberg ring lap. What do you think? I'm down. You're down? Yeah. Okay. Challenge accepted. Dry lap? Dry lap. Dry. You already know I beat you in the rain. Shut up. So, <laughs> by a lot. So here's our, here's my Vive right here. This is what I use to actually race on there. I don't race using the TV. I don't like, once you go VR in racing sim, you don't go back. So we also have our lighthouses that are mounted up here. This one here is mounted with white channeling around the window frame so that we don't get wife aggro. And the other one's mounted to the bookshelf itself. And then these bookshelves and the TV and stuff is all tethered to the wall because I live in California. Things like to fall over when the ground likes to just randomly shake. But no setup is complete without at least a home theater PC, right? The irony about this is it's in a home theater PC chassis. This is the Fractal Design Note 605. It's brushed metal, real metal. Uh, we actually have a water-cooled GTX 1080 Ti in there. Remember I did the X299 build with the 7740X because I couldn't come up with a good solution for a CPU that didn't make sense. So why not put it in the form factor with a build that didn't make sense? 1080 Ti water-cooled in a home theater PC. Really, it's just my VR machine. It runs my VR and we want all the horsepower so that we can maintain that 90 FPS, which is important so that I don't throw up all over the place. Xbox One, oh my God, unsub, unsub. You know, what? I like Forza. My daughter likes to play her Lego games. So there's that. And then down here, this is where I keep my Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse, our games. And then we've got my wire or my charging station here for the controllers. One of them's on Little Jay's desk where it doesn't belong. I'll be sure to let her know about that later. And then of course, we've got the whole point of this video, the Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar. Now this one's a 5.1.2 channel. What that means is that it's gonna simulate the five point surround. So center left and right, rear left and right. The point one means it has one subwoofer, and the point two means we have two overhead projection speak loudspeakers right here. So these are gonna be firing up and bouncing off the wall. So you want a flat wall for that as best as possible, which is gonna simulate overhead because Dolby Atmos is about, well, it's called Atmos because it's atmospheric or 360 degree sound. 
Sound in real life is not on this flat plane like you hear about all the time or you see in just basic theater setups or basic home theater setups. The sound is coming from all around us. My AC just kicked on, my brain can tell that the sound came from above me, and that's what this is about simulating. And I feel like that's a lot to ask of a soundbar, because Atmos is also enabled in individual speaker setups. So you can do a Dolby Atmos setup with 9.2.6 or whatever, you can just expand it, right? Movie theaters are like that. They have tons and tons of overhead speakers, they have more than just a rear and a front. They have speakers all down the side of the theater because they wanna give the surround effect as best as possible, the more points to surround, the more realistic it is. And Atmos is expandable in that same way. But today, with the soundbar, specifically the SJ9 from LG, it's a 500 watt RMS, which is a decent amount of, of audio, um, but we've got it all set up, running fiber optics straight to the TV, so I think it's time to demo it. All right, so the first one we'll look at here is the 747 takeoff audio. Transparency, this was sent to us by Dolby. All right, so here we go, 747 takeoff. coming from like one spot in the room, but yet we can hear it behind us. It's that magic. Is... That's voodoo is what it is. <laughs> that is so weird, because like you hear the crackle in front of you, mm -hmm. but then you can hear the echo like sort of move behind you, right? Like it sounds like it's getting farther away behind you like it would in like a mountain scape. Like, you just heard that bird take off from the left, go right, and fly back again. What's funny is we're looking at this, though, specifically knowing it's coming from a sound bar. And we're like, I think we're almost more closed-minded knowing that. Mm -hmm. Where if, it, if you just had that hidden in some way and you had someone listening in here, I feel like they'd be looking for the surround speakers. Probably, that, yeah. That's highly likely. You know it's coming from a sound bar, but I mean, were you convinced that you were hearing it coming from above you and to the right of oh, you? Oh, yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, I heard it. It was just weird how it could do that with just that instead of having speakers everywhere. Yeah. All right. You know what it's time for? Nuremberg Green. Green. He knows I'm the better driver, but I think whoever goes second is going to be under more pressure. So I save your rock, paper, scissors for it. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, show. Fine. You go first. That way everyone can see me smash your speed. Oh my gosh. Now for the record, we know that PC is not a Dolby Atmos enabled. I just want to see how good the sound quality of the sound bar is at this point.
I did a 735 after that spin and then the car wouldn't start. So I lost at least 10 or 15 seconds there. I was on track to do like a 7.5, a 7.10. It was clean though. And that spin, I didn't touch anything. I hate you. So yeah, we had the driving line on, but Nick will tell you the driving line on Nuremberg Ring is like useless. It's completely useless. That sounds pretty good. I could totally do that without headphones.